Amen. We're so glad that you have tuned in to this virtual rush experience as we continue to journey through this Lenten season. Listen, as we have come to this season, I want you to remember this is a season where we are reflecting and we are meditating on our personal relationship with the Lord. So that's why we have designed these worship services to help center you for the Lenten season. Amen. So would you join with me as we now share together in the call to worship? Let us say, how good, Lord, to be here. Your glory fills the night. How good, Lord, to be here. May our worship be pleasing in thy sight. How good, Lord, to be here. Let doubts and fears take flight. So that in these moments, we will sense all you have created us to be in this season of meditation and reflection. Amen. We're going to ask now our music ministry to come and bless us as we continue in our worship. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. He
lesson for this evening is coming from the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter, and we'll be reading verses 3 through 7. Once again, Isaiah 58, verses 3 through 7. The New Living Translation reads like this. We have fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice it. I tell you why, I respond. It is because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No. This kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Now let's pray our congregational prayer of confession together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, forgive us, that we may delight in doing your will and walking in your way. In the name of our Savior who suffered on our behalf these 40 days, amen. <laughs>
Amen. Guess what? It's preaching time, and we have another great preacher with us on tonight. Our preacher tonight is Reverend Tiffany Brooks, who serves as the young adult minister of the Reed Temple AME Church in Glendale, Maryland. Reverend Brooks is a native of Queens, New York. It's where she grew up. And then she went on to the University of Maryland College Park, and she has continued her academic pursuits at the American University, and now she is pursuing a Master of Divinity degree from that great institution, Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C. She is one who believes in serving God faithfully, and so tonight, the question is not, can Reverend Brooks preach? The question really is, can you pray? Because if you pray, guess what? She's going to preach. We're going to ask now our music ministry to come and bless us. And then the next voice you're going to hear is Reverend Tiffany Brooks, the young adult minister for the Reed Temple AME Church in Glendale, Maryland. Let the church say amen.
Hello, Rush Metropolitan AME Zion Church. I am the Reverend Tiffany Brooks, and I am so excited to be here sharing with you all. Special shout out and thank you to your pastor, Pastor Hardin, for this invite. Now, will you all join me in prayer in the position that is most comfortable to you all? Lord God, thank you. We glorify and honor your name. We are grateful for this service. We are grateful for this time to gather with one another, to hear what you have to say to us. Bless this word. May it be transformative. Breathe new life into it. May it not only change the hearers, but that it also continues to change and transform the one who is giving the message. Now, Lord, have your way and speak through me so that they may not only hear you, but see you and not me. We are grateful and honored to be able to even share in this community to glorify your name. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So hello again, Rush Metropolitan AME, uh, Zion Church. The title of my sermon is The Balancing Act. Uh, and the scripture that we will be coming from is Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. So again, the title of my sermon is The Balancing Act. And the scripture that we will be coming from is Luke, well, that I will be coming from is Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Please join me in reading. And this is a new Revised Standard Version, uh, by the way. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of this word. So since this pandemic began, it seems as though we have gotten busier than ever. And consequently, due to technology, even access to us and our individual lives has increased. People think that we should be near our phones and our computers all day just to answer their phones and their emails. So much so that people are on social media sharing memes and posting statuses about how people are on social media all day but can't answer the phone, can't respond to text messages and what have you. Not realizing and taking into account that this time of social unrest in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of our personal lives, in the midst of all that we are balancing, that we are balancing a lot. We are all engaged in a balancing act. With people remaining home and unable to move as freely as they once did, it seems and feels as though everything is piling up on top of the other because of the lack of space. And when I say space, here's what I mean. For example, it's one thing to be able to ignore what is happening at home by going out with friends, by going to work and what have you. But what happens when you can't ignore everything at home because work and life is now at home with you? For some people, this time has caused them to experience great loss and are grieving and praying for things to get better. For some people, this season and time of the pandemic has been super great, but yet they are still balancing a lot. See, this pandemic has caused people to have to juggle almost everything. They are juggling family, finances, mental health, the news intake, school, and so much more. However, for some, this pandemic wasn't the start of the balancing act. It just enhanced it. And depending on what lens and perspective you are looking through, 
It's more than just our individual lives that has been trying to hold itself together, trying to hold itself together in the balance. So what do you do when you are balancing a lot, whether brought on by yourself or placed on you involuntarily? For this Women's History Month and for the Lenten season, I want to focus on the narrative of two sisters and Jesus. You've heard their names before, Mary and Martha. We have heard this story told time and time again, normally painting Martha in a negative light and deeming Mary as the golden child. However, we rarely analyze this story from the perspective of what if Martha was just balancing a lot? What if she was just stressed out trying to fulfill societal norms? See, we would find ourselves more in Martha than we would like to think. We would find that actually Martha is not so bad after all and that Martha is actually a representation of a lot of us. The scene is set in a village that Jesus was passing through. He had been traveling and ministering and was in need of a place to rest. It is here where he is invited by Martha to take rest in her home. And I wanna pause here because I need you all to understand something that is important to this text. This was not an abnormal request during this time. This was customary practice to extend hospitality to guests and those who were in need of a place to stay. It was expected and it was customary culturally. It is also obvious that Jesus trusted that he could go to Mar Martha's house. It it has been suggested by several commentaries that this invitation and Jesus's acceptance was due to an already established relationship of some kind. Either way we look at it, what we do know is that it is Martha and Mary's house where Jesus decided to take his rest. So we enter into a scene and the language in verse 39 implies that Jesus at this point had been at Martha's home for a little while, being that her sister Mary had been sitting and listening to him at his feet. The scene then moves to highlight that Martha had been distracted by her tasks. She was simply balancing a lot. The word tasks derives from the Greek word diakonia, which translated means service in the Judeo tradition and in Christian tradition, acts of ministry. She was balancing a lot. Many have led us all to believe that Martha was just busy doing frivolous things, but a close reading of the text shows that she was engaging in ministry, the ministry of hospitality. Mary and Martha both were engaged in acts of learning and engaging in effective discipleship. Mary in a position of contemplation and Martha in a more active position. However, both women, two sisters, were engaging in ministry just differently while in the presence of the Lord. See, the centering point in this text wasn't that Martha was serving or even that Martha was engaged in ministry. It was that while Martha was engaging in ministry, she was disengaged from the presence of the Lord. She was balancing a lot, balancing ministry while trying to balance what was going on in her own home, while probably having to balance what was or was not happening with Mary too. In the text, you can tell that she was frustrated. And much like many of us, because I believe that ministry is in every space that God graces us to walk into, we are balancing church ministries, home ministry, work ministry. We are balancing a lot and have found ourselves frustrated just like Martha. However, I pose this question to you all. 
What good is engaging in ministry of any kind if we lose sight and focus of the one we are doing ministry with and for? And I'll ask that again. What good is engaging in ministry of any kind if we lose sight and focus of the one we are doing ministry with and for? See, Martha was engaged in ministry, but was disengaged from the presence. I'll say that again. Martha was engaged in ministry, but disengaged from the presence. So much so that her attention moved away from focusing on the presence of God and why she was doing what she was doing in the first place to her focus now being on what other people were and were not doing while neglecting the place that she was called to serve. And have any of us found ourselves or, or are finding ourselves here now? Which, to be honest, is okay because we are human. And when one is balancing a lot, they are tired. We know we've been doing this for going on a year now. However, where is your focus? Most of us will find ourselves more in Martha than we do Mary. And while it's great to imagine and think we spend most of our time like Mary just listening to Jesus and at the feet of Jesus and in prayer, we get busy and busy and become so consumed in the busyness. We find ourselves balancing so much and in this balancing act that our focus moves from where and why God has called us to a place and what God wants to do what this in that place to what else is happening around that place. Balancing what we are balancing and what some of us have and had had to balance. That's where our focus has gone. And we and and it's important to recognize and realize and to acknowledge that yes, what you're balancing is heavy, but where is your focus? See, it's not the balancing act. It's not the juggling. That is the problem, especially here when, much like Martha, you are working to create and maintain an environment holy enough to host the presence of the one and true living God. God knows that what many, if not all of us, are carrying is heavy. However, it is the fact that we lose focus and sight of God in the midst of it. We start complaining and things that were once seen as blessings are now burdens. Work and things are becoming overwhelming. We are now distracting ourselves. And now, much like Martha, we find ourselves demanding and telling the Lord what the Lord should do, even though we were the ones who lost focus. It got to the point that Martha almost distracted Mary too. We are balancing so much that sometimes we don't even recognize that the weight that we are bearing and carrying because we lost focus is affecting other people. But see, catch this. The beautiful thing about this narrative is that God is still and yet present. Even with Martha complaining, Jesus never gets up and leaves. He, he never walks away. Martha is doing what she does and did what she did, but Jesus did not leave. The presence of the Lord did not leave. And for all of you out there who sees themselves in the embodiment of Martha, God is still present with you, calling your name, encouraging you not to lose focus or is calling your name and is trying to draw you back. The voice of God is calling out to us saying, Martha, Martha, and insert your name in place of that. Tiffany, Tiffany, I see what you are carrying. I see what you are balancing. I see the trouble and the trauma surrounding you. I see it all, but yet you are worried and distracted by many things. This statement is Jesus identifying and acknowledging what is taking place, identifying what the issue is. But see, the recognition of this can only happen when we make a conscious effort to know and hear the voice of the Lord, regardless of where life has taken and is taking us. 
The only way we can recognize the voice of God and the presence of God is if we're focusing and looking for it and inviting it in. And this is not to discredit what you are going through. This is not to discredit that you are balancing a lot. This is not to discredit any of that because we honor you. We honor you for the work that you have committed to, but this is an accountability call to come back and to realign your focus. So if you are reading this text along with me, you will notice that there is a semicolon present indicating that there are two main points here that need a pause for reflection. Main clause number one, you are worrying and being distracted about many things. Main clause number two, there is a need of only one thing. So in the midst of all that is happening, there is in this moment only one thing needed. And so people like to read this part, verse 41, as a comparison, but I want to show you all something else. I want to show you all something else in the text. Earlier, we discussed the Greek word diakonia. We discussed service. We, we, we discussed acts of ministry. And a close reading of this text says that Mary has chosen the better part, which would in our minds make sense to believe that what Mary was doing was much better than what Martha was doing. But the word part says that clearly they were engaged as a whole unit. Mary and Martha doing ministry together. And of course, they have done ministry together before. And they both are doing what is most necessary for engaging in ministry. Mary and Martha were engaged in a greater work. They were both engaged in some form of ministry on our service, but the difference, Martha lacked and lost focus. Her hospitality ministry, arguably in a sense was impacted as well. What was needed was not just focus, but focus on the right thing and the right one, which was at that time Christ. This wasn't even saying that Martha needed to stop what she was doing. It's to show that even in the midst of what she was doing, even in the midst of what we are doing, we have to keep our minds stayed and focus on Christ. See, the scriptures are filled with texts concerning time. And most often the main focus is about how fleeting time is. When in the presence of the Lord, how are we making the most of our time? In the midst of balancing a lot, how are we managing and focusing our time? Where are we spending our energy? And sometimes what are we putting too much energy into? See, I am almost certain that Martha could have stopped what she was doing or could have managed her time better in such a way that she could focus on Jesus while preparing the house. But do we even stop these days? Do we even stop and pause in the midst of everything going on to discern and acknowledge the presence of God? While God is always present, the fullness of that presence is recognized when we invite God in. In all that we are balancing, have we invited God in? Have we invited God into our finances? Have we invited God into our personal and professional lives? Have we invited God into our ministries? Have we even invited God into the challenges of the world? I heard this listening to my devotion and it's a quote from Tyler Boss who does voiceovers for the Abide application. He said, God wants us to maximize our time focused on God as we do the work that we have been called to. That God invites us to make the most of our time by dwelling in God's presence. As we are juggling and managing these balancing acts, how are we managing our time and energy? Some of us will find that when we get back focused on the Lord, that the things we think and thought we had to balance are things we don't have to balance at all. I also look at Martha and think about rest. What if Martha sitting at Jesus's feet and stopping her activity was a moment for her to rest? Some of us are looking for opportunities to rest and what God is saying is, give it all to me. Take a pause, sit at my feet, 
and breathe a little while. See, God is calling some of us to rest, especially during this Lenten season. For some of us, this Lenten season is not only an opportunity to give something up and sacrifice to God. For some of us, it's a time to find rest in God and to increase in a spiritual discipline, such as journaling and or prayer. If Martha were here today, I would say to her, I see that you are balancing a lot, sis. So much so that it has taken your focus away from the very presence of God. It has pulled you elsewhere. You are tired and sometimes it feels like you are doing and balancing all of this by yourself. However, this balancing act can be made easier if you stop looking at all that you're carrying and focus it back on the one who can not only carry it all, but will give you and restore your joy, peace, and rest in the midst of it all. And it's the same encouragement for you. God knows that you're tired. God knows that you're balancing a lot. God knows that even sometimes that you feel like you are alone in it all. But the beautiful thing is that God is still present. And God is yet ever still calling. So give the balancing act over to Jesus. Draw yourself back to God. Draw yourself back to drinking from the spring of life and living water. Give all your balancing and all that you're carrying over to Christ. Happy Lenting season. Happy Women's History Month. And God bless you all. Amen. We thank God for the word of God, the bread of life. We thank God for feeding us and nourishing our soul. But at this point, it is time for a response. And you can choose to respond by just saying an empty amen, or you can just say a paltry praise the Lord, or you can change your life for the better because God wants the best for you. And so if you would, please give us a call on the number on, at the number on your screen. We'd be so happy to pray with you. If you feel like you're not saved, if you're not sure if you are a Christian, you're not sure if the word applies to you, then give us a call and we can invite you into the fellowship of Christian believers that we might be able to work together to make all of our lives better. And if you please, if you need prayer, if you need any kind of supplication, please give us a call at the number on your screen that we might be able to pray with you and help you through whatever issue it is that you're going through because God is there. God is here waiting for you. Just come to him, respond to his word, and give us a call on the screen that we might be able to bring you with us to the throne of grace, that we might be able to pray on your behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.